your fire. I walk the line. Folsom Prison Blues. These are all some very important songs sang by the country music legend Johnny Cash. At this point, Johnny Cash is a pretty much a household name for everybody. Mostly everybody's heard of him, heard some of his songs, including my family. Although many people have heard some of Johnny Cash's songs, many people don't know the story behind the famous singer. They don't know the high points of his career, um, where he was born, the downfall of his career, or his rede the redemption of his career. First of all, we're going to dive into Johnny Cash's early life as a kid. So, Johnny Cash's early life began in Arkansas. So, he was born, John R. Cash was born on February 26, 1932, in Kingsland, Arizona. Cash spent most of his life growing up in Dias, Arkansas, uh, with his seven siblings. They moved to Dias, Arkansas when Cash was three so they could take advantage of the New Deal program which was a farming program instituted by President Franklin Roosevelt, and this was because of the Great Depression. He was giving out different farmland to different people to boost the economy, and I found this on biography.com. So Cash spent much of the next 15 years out in the fields, working alongside his parents and siblings to pay off their debts. It wasn't an easy life, and music was one of the ways Cash found, the Cash family found escape from the hardships. So songs surrounded young, young Cash, be it his mother's folk and hymn ballads, which is just many, you know, Christian songs he'd sing because most people knew that back then. A lot of people were very Christian back then. And then, um, or the working music people sang out in the fields, which are other songs that people would sing a lot. Religion, too, had a strong impact on Cash's childhood. His mother was a devout member of the Pentecostal Church of God, and his older brother Jack seemed committed to joining the priesthood until his tragic death in 1944 when we were in an electric saw with an electric saw accident. So his brother was 12 years old when he died, and he was out working at a school for their, um, which was 4-H, which was like really new back then. So he was working, um, sawing logs, and he got caught into the saw, and it was all, it was horribly mangled from that. And he actually had to walk home, and his dad quick picked him up, and he lived for one day suffering, which was just horribly hard on the whole cash family. So from Cash's upbringing of hard work and patience, we move into his early adult life, which sparked his career. So adulthood. In 1950, Cash graduated high school and left Dias, Arkansas to seek employment. That summer, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force, and he was sent for training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, where he met his future wife, Vivian Moberto. For the bulk of his four careers in the Air Force, Cash was stationed in Landsberg, West Germany, where he worked as a radio intercept officer, eavesdropping on Soviet radio traffic. After his discharge in July 1954, Cash married Vivian and settled with her in Memphis, Tennessee, where he worked as best as he could as an appliance salesman. Pursuing music on the side, Cash teamed up with a couple of mechanics, Marshall Grant and Luther Perkins, who worked with Cash's older brother, Roy Cash. In July 1954, another Memphis musician, Elvis Presley, which I'm sure many people have heard of, um, cut his first record, sparking a wave of Elvis mania, as well as interest in the local producer at Sun Records owner, Sam Phillips, who had issued the record. Later that year, Cash, Grant, and Perkins made an, an announced visit to Sun to ask Phillips for an audition. The Sun Records owner gave in, and Cash and the boys soon returned to show off their skills. Phillips liked their sound, but not their gospel-driven song choices, which he felt would have limited market, and he asked them to return to their studio to sing an original song. So the trio did just that, beginning work with, on the cash-written Hey Border song. Shortly that first, uh, first song session, Phillips liked that song, as well as the group's follow-up effort, Cry, Cry, Cry. And he signed the newly branded Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two, which, which consisted of the three singers. Other hits followed, including the top 10 tracks, So Doggone Lonesome, Folsom Prison Blues, but the true fame arrived in 1956 when Cash wrote and released I Walk the Line, which catapulted to number one on the country music charts and sold two million copies. And right here from my visual aid, I have different songs that Johnny Cash wrote, and it goes in from order from his first songs all the way to his last songs in his career. You can see about right here, um, there's I Walk the Line, and you can see that one above 80, so like that one, which sparked his career. 
And you go on down the line, you can see Ring of Fire was also a huge hit. And then you have um, Jackson, which he actually sang was his, with his future wife, uh, June Carter Cash. And then you can see right here, you have One Piece of the Time and Ghost Rider, which are songs that he sang pretty late in his career. So these are all huge high points in Cash's career, but with the huge climb comes a huge fall. So a bump in the road. By the early 1960s, Cash, who had relocated his family to California and left for Sun, Sun Records for Columbia Records, um, was a musical superstar. On the road for 300 nights a year with the group now known as the Tennessee Three, he was often accompanied by June Carter Cash, who co-wrote what became the Man in Black signature song, Ring of Fire, which he wrote in 1963. But the schedule and pressure that faced him took a toll on his personal life. Drugs and alcohol were frequent to her companions while Vivian left home to take care of their family, which now included daughters Roseanne Cash, Kathy Cash, Cindy Cash, and Tara Cash, which um, they grew increasingly frustrated with um, her husband's absence. In 1966, she finally filed for divorce with Johnny Cash. Cash's personal life continued to spiral out of control. The following year, after a serious drug binge, Cash was discovered near in a near-death state by a policeman in a small village in Georgia. There are two incidents, too, including arrest for smuggling amphetamines into the United States um, across the Mexican border and for starting a forest fire in California Park. He said, I took all the drugs there to take and I drank, Cash recalled. Now, from a huge dip in Cash's career, we go to the revival of this country, of this country singer's life with the help of one very special woman. So the revival of an icon. Cash got into the lifeline he needed from his old touring companion, June Carter, who helped him refocus on his Christian faith and get the drug addiction treatment he needed. The two were married on March 1st, 1968. With his new wife, Cash embarked on a remarkable turnaround. In 1969, he began hosting the Johnny Cash Show, a TV variety series that showcased contemporary musicians ranging from Bob Dylan to Louis Armstrong. It also provided a forum for Cash to explore a number of social issues, tackling discussions that ranged from the war in Vietnam to prison reform to the rights of Native Americans. I found this on the countrymusichallofame.com. Cash continued to maintain a busy schedule. He joined forces with fellow uh, country music singers Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, and Waylon Jennings um, to form The Highwaymen, which released three studio albums between 1985 to 1995, and they were frequent. Uh, they would frequently go to different farm shows and like farm aid to help raise money for the cause. So throughout this time, though, Cash has held problems and. It, and he continued battles with addiction were nearby. After going to, into abdominal surgery in 1983, he checked himself into the Betty Ford Clinic in 1998. Cash went under the knife, this time for double pipe bypass heart surgery. So sadly, these health conditions would seriously hurt Cash in the near future, but he went out with a giant bang in his final years. And now we have the final days. Still, the artist continued making music, and in 2002, he released American IV, The Man Comes Around which was a mix of originals and covers, including songs from the Beatles to Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. The album recorded was at the Cash Cabin Studio in Hendersonville, Tennessee. So he wrote all these songs while he stayed basically in the cabin that he owned, and this one producer would come in and just let him play his guitar and sing. That's what all the albums were, and people loved it. So over the next year, Cash's health continued to decline. He was devastated when his longtime lover, June Carter, died in May 2003. But he continued to work. The singer recorded what would become American the Five a Hundred Highways just a week before his death on September 12, 2003, from complications associated with diabetes. Cash wrapped up his final track. That November, Cash was posthumously honored at the CMA Annual Awards, winning the Best Album for American Fourth and be the Best Single and Best Video. In conclusion, Johnny Cash will forever be seen as a big influence on country music as we know it today. Johnny Cash lived a life of hard, honest work. Johnny Cash started as a humble farm boy who had a passion for music who would soon become a country music icon. Cash spent time in the Air Force while he was starting up his music career and finally found a record label that would sign him. Cash's career, however, wasn't always great. He endured many hardships throughout his career and he even found redemption in his life. Johnny Cash is a very great example of how hard work and dedication can pay off. Johnny Cash will forever be renowned for his extraordinary life story and fantastic music.